Dear President of the UN General Assembly, Mr. Mogens Lichtoff. Dear Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon. Dear Minister of Foreign Affairs from France, Mr. Laurent Fabius. Dear Executive Secretary of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, Mrs. Christiana Figueres. Dear friends, I would like to thank the opportunity to address you on this occasion to share with you my views on the climate negotiation in the road to Paris COP21. Let me begin talking about the status of the bond negotiation. So what we have so far and what we need. The last climate negotiation in Bonn, while a very complex one, was a process that strengthened ownership. It was able to deliver a text owned by Paris. It also reassured a process with transparency and that the French incoming presidency will preserve and continue to reassure inclusive negotiation process. With these principles of ownership, transparency and inclusiveness, the Paris will deliver the agreement in Paris, I'm completely sure. The new document represents an improvement in relation to the initial we had at the beginning of the last bond negotiation. The unbalanced text we had was transformed and accepted as a basis for negotiation. However, the resulting text is not good enough. It still contains many complex options and contrasting views. It will requ require a lot of time and goodwill to bridge our difference swiftly. We need to work out the remaining divergences in the most critical issues. The parties have requested the Secretariat to prepare a technical paper with further streamlined language that will certainly help this process. Additionally, if we want to transform this text into a legal agreement and decisions, we need to work differently in Paris. In our view, we must find together the most appropriate procedures and modalities to increase the pace and the effectiveness of the negotiation. We need to find the right method to reach compromise and consensus on the key issues. I am confident that we can deliver the fair, ambitious and pragmatic outcome that we need in Paris. But remember, we had begun the bond negotiation with a lot of resistance because an unbalanced text. And fortunately, with the new text, we have gained ownership. So we should work based on that. Let me move to a second point means and actions taken by COP20 CMP10 and COP21 CMP11 to find common grounds. As a COP20 presidency's contribution to the process, we have engaged throughout this year together with the incoming French COP21 CMP11 presidency in organizing informal consultation for reaching common ground on the most critical issues surrounding the upcoming Paris Agreement. In this vein, with the aim of providing a space to discuss of pre-2020 climate finance, both COP20 and COP21 presidencies took the decision to convene in Lima in the context of the IMF World Bank annual meetings, a discussion on climate finance among the Minister of Finance, as we understand it is one of the main issues with the climate, within the climate discussion. One important input was the OECD report. The necessity of meeting the US 100 billion commitment by 2020 was reaffirmed. The report estimated that US 62 billion had been mobilized in 2014 and an average of 57 billion mobilized for 2013-2014. 
on the one hand, it brings a sense of the urgent need to increase finance for adaptation. On the other hand, it brings to the table the discussions on the methodologies to and the need to substantially strengthen the transparency provision for reporting climate finance. In that regard, this report could usefully inform the ongoing work of the Standing Committee on Finance of the UNFCCC. Let me say one important thing. We should put four pieces together as a way to assure success in Paris. The first piece, the political support and the political will. Fortunately, during the lunch convened by the President of France, President of Peru, and Secretary General of United Nations in September in New York, in last September in New York, we have gained and obtained that political support of almost 35 to 40 heads of states. Fortunately, they are continuing working to maintain that will and that support to the process. The second piece, it is related to the climate finance meeting that we had in Lima in last October. That shows a new methodology, that shows that there are now good efforts to mobilize resources and that we still maintain the goal and the objective that I'm sure we will reach of the 100 billion by 2020. The third very important new piece, it is the report that the Secretary of the Convention has just released of the aggregate effects of the INDCs. This report shows to the world a good news. We can download the curve and we can avoid that current trend of around 3.8 degrees Celsius. But it is not enough. The report shows that we still are around the 2.7 degrees Celsius by the end of this century. So in Paris, we should take that into consideration as a way to raise ambition. And obviously, the fourth piece, it is the negotiation. I think that by the end of the bond negotiation meeting of the ADP, we have created ownership. But we should move to have a very good pre-COP in Paris by November 8th and 9th of this year. So this three days pre-COP, starting on Sunday in Paris, will provide the last high-level informal opportunity to smooth things over, bringing to the table an open, candid, out-of-the-box space for Paris to discuss and find bridging opportunities. Let me also share with you on another aspect of the work of the COP20 and COP21 presidencies regarding climate action. Building on the Secretary General Summit of September 2014 and on COP20 of December last year, both presidencies, together with the UN Secretary General Office and the Secretariat of the UNFCCC, we have been working on an ambitious and comprehensive platform for climate action to recognize and boost climate action made by state and non-state actors in a collaborative manner. The Paris Conference will include the presentation of the Lima Paris Action Agenda, where we will be able to see the urgency of acting in terms of adaptation and mitigation, the solutions we find and how these solutions are projected to the future highlighting the role of cooperative action among the different stakeholders. Let me finish my intervention by reaffirming that I am confident that the global community, represented by their government, will come forward with a good outcome in Paris and that we will reach success in delivering the climate agreement the world needs. Thank you very much and I hope you will have or you can have a very useful and fruitful meeting. Thank you very much.